Reasons 14 doing a uh, 180 man hand history view. The uh, $2 one played by Keshi. Uh, this particular hand history was from I think a couple of months ago and kind of going to go over some of the things that we've fixed since then. Um, it's pretty basic. He ends up getting pretty deep in this one. And yeah, so uh, early game stuff. Don't think I really need to go over the range as much. I've said them uh, quite a bit in my last videos, so if you need to um, familiarize yourself with them, just go check those out. And let's just get going. Now it's uh, limped around, easy check with 9-10. And then I don't mind leading out here at all. There's, uh, we're going to be able to get values from uh, straight draws and flush draws. Um, and with so many people in the pot, I think, uh, I think that's totally fine. Um, could go for possible check, check raise here. But um, yeah, I think a lead out's fine. And then he slows down right here, which is okay. I might actually just go ahead and lead out again, just because it's a two dollar one eighty. We're still getting a lot of value. But it checks behind, it. and then we boat up by the river, and then I think betting uh the one eighty is fine. We're always gonna get called by six, and maybe even like flushes and things like that, just because I feel the two dollar one eighties are pretty uh pretty loose. All right, pick up jacks with about 15 big blinds. Um, usually around the 5100 level, that's when things pick up. That might not totally get to you know push up in like STTs or even eight, 18 man sometimes, but be with the 180s and uh, kind of MTTs in general start to shove a bit deep, even with around 15 to 20 big blinds. So um, yeah, pick up jacks, easy snap call. Seventy-five, one hundred and fifty level, sitting pretty good right now with about twenty bigs. And this is a missed spot, you know, uh, chip EV wise, in my opinion, since we need a lot of chips to build up to the final table for the one eighties. It's you know pretty important we take a lot of chip e, uh, chip EV spots. This is uh, pretty much a shove if it's uh, blind versus blind, and if it's full round to us. But given that the under the gun guy is on such a wide range and King Nine uh, fares pretty well. You know, we have about three to one, or actually a little bit better, it looks like, in this particular situation. So I would actually uh, sh ship it here. And we could actually ship uh, a bit wider than this. So I would, um, I would get it in for sure. And right here, if it uh, gets shoved to us, any, like, even from you know the button, definitely the small blind. I'm I'm always gonna get it in right here. Uh, King Queen's just too good to be passed up. But um, I noticed that we get a couple walks from this player right here, so that's something to keep in mind. And King Nine even versus the Limper is still gonna be a fold. We don't have a whole lot of fold equity on this particular um, guy right here. Whenever he limps with such a sh short stack, usually people limping with short stacks are uh, more apt to call a shove whenever we uh, shove on them. And then we get another walk, so that's uh, pretty important to notice as far as the game flow goes. Um, if it was full around to us, queen eight right here, you could be shoving very wide um, in this particular spot. But some things I would notice is I'm going to muck off a certain portion of my range if it's full around to us uh, because of the small uh, because of the small blind. Um, because he's so short, he's going to be calling a wider amount of the time, so we'll not have something with a little bit better equity. But queen eight, if it was full around to us, obviously still a shove. And this is a minor miss spot with less than heavy blinds and annies in the pot. Um, and the annies actually do make up a good portion um, of the pot in the middle right now, just because there's so many people. You know, adds up to 200 in the middle. That's that's quite a bit. That's six. That's 650 chips at this point. A huge portion of our stack. I'm shoving in like a lot of you know pseudo connector type hands just to try and maintain a stack of like well over 10 big blinds. So 710. I mean 65. You know, you could even be getting a hand, hands like that. Um, obviously, it is somewhat dependent on you know the players in the blinds, but uh, 710 suited definitely want to be getting it in. And at the blinds up to 200, 400, effectively have around five big blinds now with the antis, so definitely want to be getting it in. Be getting it in. It's very important to keep up your stack and um, use the bit of fold equity, fold equity you have because like whenever we lose that fold equity, we're gonna get picked off by a whole lot of players, and um, you know. 
uh, a stack with fold equity and an MTT turbo sit and go is pretty much the most important thing that you could have. I mean, pretty much in any multi-table uh, format. King ten, the big blind, and to this overbet shove, um, King ten's not faring too well versus that range that we usually see. So definitely like a fold. Standard shove BVB. You could pretty much be on any two cards there. And standard shove. Pocket fours right in here with less than 10 move blind. Uh, my range is pretty much, as far as pairs go, any pair. So good shove. And we hold. It's this is a this is a miss spot right here. Um, villain with five big blinds is going to be on a pretty wide range, and you know eights is easily within the top ten percent of hands. And versus what is probably around thirty percent, we're actually doing pretty good equity wise. Um, you know even with all this dead running the pot. So even though we are in, in kind of a weird position, there's actually not a whole lot of stacks that you come that could hurt us. After this, you know we're still gonna be left with ten big blinds. You know a good portion of, of the time. Unless this guy just wakes up with a hand, and uh, he has king and queen, ace jack. I like the raise. Um, I definitely like the raise because we don't necessarily want to be calling shoves from you know this 9k stack or this 9k stack right here. But we're still able to pick up a lot of chips from like the 2k stacks and uh, these other micro stacks down here. You know, ace jack isn't the best hand out of position, but with a versus a lot of small effective stack sizes, you know, it's going to play very well, especially with the twos because. We're pretty much just raising here for pure value um, versus those two dollar guys, and um, just knowing the players at the twos, you know, a lot of times they're never really going to reship with a hand that beats us or that doesn't beat beat us. Um, so it's just kind of good to uh, go for it right there. Ace queen versus the raise, small effective stack size, definitely going to be getting it in. And actually, back here, it's you know, since we're pretty much getting. Three, three to one. Whenever he has the rest of his chips in, like I'm calling, you know, with almost any two cards here, we don't need ace queen really. We could, you know, we could be snapping off really wide here. And since our stack is well over ten big blinds, and it's not going to hurt us a good amount. I mean, like six five off, three four suited, and things like that. Let me go ahead and call. And now looking at this particular situation, everything is below ten big blinds effective, making this a shove. Good. And nice flip there for sure. Okay, it looks like we are getting close to the money bubble if we're not, I mean, getting close to the money if we're not in there already. Yeah, I think we're on the bubble, or the money bubble coming up. Um, good fold, ace on the gun. Um, I don't mind a limp as long as it's first is like a passive player. If I'm gonna limp here, I'm usually always gonna stab. Um, stabbing here is fine. Uh, he didn't raise pre-flop, so it's kind of less likely he has a king. And uh, we're gonna get value from some sort of straight draws here. So I definitely like just checking it behind. I would go ahead and fold this uh, particular turn card. Um, I really don't like the, the check call. It's, you know, villain's never really going to get too fancy here where he just, like, you know, floats us on the flop and tries to take it on the river with air. So I'm going to usually just go ahead and fold, fold the turn and get and give up the hand. So it's close. But this is pretty good information to see. Now, seeing this, that he, you know, gets out of line with third pair type hands, I'm going to be lim limping a lot of hands um, to him in the, fu in the future. And King 4, not quite an ISO shove. If we had something like King 9 with some more of this dead one in the pot, I would like it. But King 4 is just a bit too weak, and we don't necessarily want to show it down. The thing is, we're always going to be showing it down um, because that short stack is all in, and uh, we don't want to give up that image. It just, it just is going to hurt us a bit. Okay, so Wix um, is at the table. Many of you that use hotkeys, it's from him right here. <laughs> um... He kind of pops in a lot of random sit and goes every now and then. So, but other than that, not a whole lot of regulars here at the the two one eighties. Five big blinds. 
this spot is pretty potent. I know we're getting like 1.6 to 1. King 8, you know, it's going to have like 55, 60% equity versus any random hand. Probably closer to 55. We are getting, you know, a decent price. I'm kind of in between about this one. If you had, you know, a read that this guy was a tag and he's going to be shutting wide, then it's fine. You know, this is really, this is really range dependent. I um, mean, if he's shutting wide, it's fine. But if he's not, I would so much rather just hang on to my stack because if, if we lose this, um, we lose this pot we're just kind of getting below 10 of lines and i really like our stack at this point so um i think this is usually a call versus you know i mean this is always a call versus regulars uh just because they're showing so wide wide here but versus unknowns like super tight unknowns this is a little more close so um i'd keep my eyes open for situations like this but ace three we get there nice hand and Versus the 11k shot, fold is fine. Don't want to be really flipping that much of our stack at this point. And ace eight. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, a shove is fine here. It's you know, there's three thousand in the middle. It's you know, over ten percent of our stack. Got the Annie's in there. Um, if the button is on the loose passive side, a shove is okay. I would actually much rather prefer to uh, just raise it up up here. I think it's a more prudent play. If we have to get um, away from it, we're still going to have above 10 10 big blinds. And you know, it looks like we've been pretty tight right now. And again, this is one of those things where I like to keep my own HUD stats up so I could, you know, see my image and see how other players perceive me specifically. And, you know, that way we could just exploit them accordingly. If we've been really tight, obviously we could open our range a little bit more. If we've been super loose, we want to be doing things more for value. But, uh, so shove here is a little spewy. I would just, you know, go ahead and raise it up there. Overall, not bad though. And let's see what we did here. It looks like... This guy min raises it right here, and we're getting a pretty good price, five to one. I would probably go ahead and call it as well. Our stack's okay at this point, um, but yeah, I have to get away from it. So careful there. Ace five, ten bigs, easy shove, and our range on here is going to be you know pretty much around 80 percent or though. Uh, we have ten big blinds. I mean, we are getting a little bit closer to. Uh, dollar EV now we are in dollar EV um, actually but the payout structure of the 180s you know it's super flat at, at the beginning like the um, the top 18 get paid but the first nine are getting paid the exact same um, so it's really important to be really wide and try and get a stack for the final table because uh, the way the 180s are, restru are structured it's pretty much all about getting those uh, those first payout spots And King Nine, I like it. Versus the limp, yeah, this is you know again one of those like really unconfrontational limps, um, a little HUD dependent. But you know again, like I've stated, you know there's not that many good players at the two, so most of them are going to appear to be pretty uh, loose, pat, passive in this scenario. So when I do shove here, I try and shove as fast as possible. The longer we wait, I think we appear to be just a bit weaker. So I definitely like a shot here. And blind versus blind, um, you know, any ace, any king, any queen, any jack. Gonna get in here, very wide range. Uh, we have shoved the last few hands, so I'm gonna muck off total like smaller trash hands, you know, like seven three and things like that, just because we do call it a bit wider here. But you know, this also depends. You know, if we're not playing a whole lot of tables. Sometimes, you know, you could pull up the other table and look to see how the other stacks are doing because this guy is doing the exact same thing. If he's close to getting a final table or so, he's going to be trying to wait wait it out, and it just gives a nice little bubble effect that we, we could own. So not only can you own the money bubble, but I think owning the uh, final table bubble is just a little more effect effective uh, in, in these uh, types of sitting goes. Let's see, ace 10 definitely would like a... Actually, just go ahead and shove here. Well, yeah, with 10, 10 bigs, uh, definitely a shove is fine. Um, this is probably a misclick. 
Um, seeing him show the ace deuce, don't think he's really folding the uh, ace seven there on purpose. So I'll just chalk that one up to a misclick. And fives, yep. Yeah, don't really want to do any raising here with this guy right here. Uh, Ten big blinds, easy ship with any pair. And yeah, a seven's not the type of hand you'll be calling with. We're either slightly ahead or dominated. So, and you know this player has been sort of passive, done some lumping blind versus blind. So we usually see a bit of a stronger holding here. Um, I'm gonna want like you know at least around ace ten or something like that to be making a call like this. Okay, so from the looks of things, we are at the final table now. There's one the big stack, a couple. Sh mid stacks around the short stacks around here um, so not too bad of a spot we have a lot of full equity on these stacks right here and as I stated in my last 180 video uh, the tendencies of a lot of players are going to be um, they're just too tight actually at the um, the five through nine spots when those are the spots that you need to be getting wide on the final table because the path structure is so steep or it's so steep when you get to the one two three four spots but it's rather flat you know, going into it, so you actually need to be shoving a lot wider than um, some other people do. So it's pretty important to, you know, play around with whiz a little bit and see exactly um, the spots that you need to be ta taking and try and figure out where you should be getting your ed uh, your edges. So yeah, there's some things to keep in mind. Again, shipping those walks a bit. Versus the raise and the shove, you know, I mean, definitely uh, easy fold. And jacks, yeah, I don't like to do anything fancy with uh, below timing blind, so it's a pretty standard shove. And right here, uh, looks like Villain has 11k. He doesn't even have a 3 3 bit blind, so Queen Jack's playing very well uh, versus whatever range that he's shoving. And we're getting almost like, we're almost getting 3 to 1, we're getting at least 2, 2.5, 5 to 1 here. And yeah, so this is definitely a snap call. I mean, even though like our stack isn't the greatest, but this is just too good of a price to be passing up. I'm definitely calling with a large range here, like probably around 70%, I think. Um, yeah, so definitely get this in here. Um, yeah, easy shot for sure. Uh, effectively, blow tummy blinds. Um, we have so much fold equity on this guy right here. There's no way he's calling us just like insanely light. And eight five is gonna play well versus the Tyler calling range. You know we're not dominated as often. You know by hands like you know ace king if we shove king deuce or something like that. So I'm always gonna be shoving my suited connector hands here blind versus blind. And we get there. And I would just go ahead and shove. It's the same thing. I mean. Looks like we have like more full deck if we that way. So yeah, we have to have call it off here. And yeah, you say ships. And yeah, folding here is fine. We have a pretty good stack. This guy only has two big blinds left, and so usually he's gonna get in with him. But he doesn't. So now that we're waiting out to like the three, four, and five spot, I would um Definitely kind of wait out for this guy right here to get not knocked out. Now that it's happened, we have to tighten up our ranges a little bit. Um, and yeah, and like when it gets to the shorthanded, it's pretty important to observe like the particular game flow. I mean, this guy just gave us a walk, so um, I definitely might tighten up a little bit versus this big stack blind versus blind because we're not going to have as much fold equity uh, versus him as we will other mid stacks. So if we're getting a lot of walks here, I definitely feel it not as necessary to be taking a lot of shoves here, blind versus blind. Definitely some things to consider. So um, with 49k, I'd probably actually be mock, mock, I'd be mock mocking this on the button. You can show this blind versus blind, but I would probably just go ahead and mock here. 10 jack. Um, again, it's just it's just a bit wide. Whenever these guys look like they've been getting into some situations, so. I would uh I would go ahead and muck this here actually. Nine ten. Um this is a bit better because we're starting to build a chip lead over these three guys, but the thing is we've been shoving so much we're starting to lose fold equity, so I actually tone it down here a bit. Um but they're still folding. Uh, 
this is a good shove with the chip lead, or we don't have quite have the chip lead. Yeah, I'd probably just go for a ra like a raise here. Um, if we raise and we get repopped, you know, usually because we're dealing with you know weaker players, they're only gonna repop us with hands that beat us. And um, you know, I definitely think we have the advantage of people on flops. So I wouldn't. I'd say you know not to be afraid of you know flops, but work into raise holding some of your range here. Because if we shove here and get called with a ninety two k guy, I just it's it's just off, awful to our stack. But adding you know these eleven thousand chips in here, you know it's it's definitely good for us. But it doesn't do just a whole lot. You know we're still you know hovering around set set, set in our first place. So definitely be careful about the over shoves in this spot. I'd probably just go for a raise. And again, right here, I mean, a shove is fine. I probably would just go for a raise. Eh, I'd probably go ahead and shove in this spot just to try and get the chip lead back and try and establish um, a nice, solid, you know, hold over the table. This is definitely too wide. Um, again, you know, dealing with tight calling ranges, you know, King Deuce is almost one of the last things you want to be pushing. I'd so much rather be shoving like a pseudo connector type hand. So, um, it is good to be aggressive, but this is just a bit too aggressive. Yeah, so, uh, he versus, you know, uh, Ace-10, more fortunate to uh, catch two pair by the river. Little run goods never hurt. Alright, um... Yeah, so this is actually losing a bit of value, value here. I think it's um, a bit more plus EV to just try and induce a reship, actually. Uh, this is just forcing him to play a little more perfect. If we just, like, raise here, it could look like we're just trying to mess with this blind, and he could repop us, like, somewhat light. So I'm going to look to just, like, raise and call a shove here. Um, even though this guy is shorter, we'd still be set second in chips if that happened, if we lost the pot here, so... I'm still going to be uh, just raise calling here. This just forces him to fall out so many hands, and in the big scheme of things, like this 9K doesn't help out too much. Um, another alt alternate line, if you don't want to like raise call or shove because that feels so gross, um, you can do some experimenting with some limp shoving, and that makes the hand easier to play. Because I mean, if you know, if we limp and he shoves, you know, obviously we're beat. But if he limp, you know, and he raises, we get to shove and have a pick up a lot of extra chips. I mean, we still have full uh, full equity, so. That's totally fine. Um, queen nine. I don't think it's really too necessary. These chips don't do a whole lot to our stack. We're still going to be in first place either way. And then, you know, this guy is calling water, so we're actually just going to have to show show down the queen nine. And queen nine plays okay versus 100% of hands, but it's just not the most necessary thing, you know, for image wise and, and other things. It's uh, I would just tone it down here for sure. Let's see. Big blind at 7k, just min raise. Yeah, I do it. Um, yeah, this is. I, de I definitely like the call here pre. We're just getting too good of odds to fold. And yeah, the dog's fine. I really don't mind the way this hand's played. Um, I think it's fine. Don't really want to check raise. That'd be too much of our stack. This way, we could still get away from it. I think that's fine, actually. So yeah, now that we're getting a lot of walks from this guy, um, I'm probably not going to shove queen queen five, just because um, it's not going to play well. We have a workable stack, and we're getting walks from this guy. If he was shoving every time blind versus blind, I had 70k. I probably would shove this, but I think it's just really important to, um, you know, muck this off for game flow and meta reasons. It's just you know we're still in second place at the end of the day, so it's those really those chips really don't make too much of a difference. And definitely like seeing us not taking that flip there with twos, no reason to. King nine, yeah, I'm gonna tone it down here a little bit. You could probably experiment with a raise. I um, mean, yeah, at this point, you know, we haven't really raised much, so we don't know how the villains are gonna react. So um, I would give that a, give, give that a shot, and uh, that way we don't have to risk so much of our stack just for a small portion of chips being over ten to blinds. And blind versus blind. This is okay. He's pretty much shoving at this point. He has 46. So, I mean, yeah, since he's so short, I really can't fold, fold the threes there. Whoop. Standard shove. 
Yeah, so kind of the opposite. Um, I'd actually be way more inclined to shove the 8-9 with the 50K than shove, you know, an overshove with a King X type hand. Um, it's going to play better, even though we are dealing with a bit more wider calling ranges now. Um, we're just below 10 blinds now and we want to start moving some chips around. Yeah, versus the shove. Um, we, were, we haven't really seen him do too much shoving with the blinds, did just go up, so now we're dealing with lower effective stacks. So I do like a call here. Ace 10 is a little, little too good to pass up. And get there. Ship the, ship the straight. Now I definitely like just do some abusing now. If the stacks are relatively equal, now we have, you know, like an invisible ball bubble type situation. To where they're trying to outlast each other. Uh, trying to outlast each other. Alright, let's see what happened here. And raise and call. Okay, so now we're heads up. Um, effective stacks, not too much over 10 bigs. I like the min raise here. We should pretty much be min raising our entire um, ra raising range um, with below 30 big blinds. Just better as far as effective stacks go. Um, so yeah, queen is one of those hands, you know, I don't really want to shove, don't want to fold it, so like a limp or a raise is fine. At the initial start of the heads up, I like to raise a bit more and just kind of come on with the aggression just because it's heads up, it's really hard to pick up any good hands, so it's likely your opponent has nothing as well. And when this guy checks behind, I'm always going to value bet this river. Let's go through that hand again. So raise and call, continuation bet. And he calls. The three actually does complete a lot of draws. When he goes check, check. Uh, eh, okay, I actually, I actually do like the check uh, a bit more. He's, he's still going to be check calling us with a lot of two, two pairs in his, in his range. Um, I don't really think Trips plays it this way. So, yeah, I think, I think just checking back is a more prudent play. King 8, uh, shoving effective sacks, John Timing Blind, pretty standard. Shoving any king there, pretty much. Queen nines, good shove. And yeah, that's about it. So yeah, not a whole lot of mistakes. This one is pretty well played. I would definitely say to tighten up some of the ranges whenever, you know, you're shorthanded. Um, you know, like those four handed spots where you have like king nine and you know get wide when we had that eight nine suited spot, but uh, for the most part, the early part looked good. You know, there's a few shoves in there that we need to be picking up on, like the ten set, uh, the ten seven suited, and the cutoff with less than ten blinds, uh, things like that. But uh, for all you guys, yeah, I'd say this is a pretty good example on how um, a one eighty man should be played. Definitely taking you know a lot of shoves. Um, just gotta play well and run uh, run well. Um, you know, as soon as you get deep, a few of these, you know, run over some spots and whiz and things like that, and that's really gonna benefit you a lot in understanding the you know the final table structure on how these things are played so yeah if you guys have any questions about it feel free to ask me in the forums hope you like it this is reasons 14 for grinder school